Hi everyone, Dr. Ed here. Hope you like my library wallpaper. It's, it's not my real library, but a virtual library. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, using a website called clinicaltrials.gov uh, to uh, try and look for research opportunities. Let me start sharing my screen. So it all started with uh, this message that I got uh, from uh, someone in the group um, where uh, that uh, applicant uh, or medical graduate was looking for research opportunities. And so basically I replied back uh, here saying that, hey, you know, you need to come up with a research topic um, uh, that, that's interesting to you. And this is what I was asked to uh, uh, give my thoughts about effect of stress and anxiety on immune system during COVID-19 pandemic in elderly population of US. That is, is there anyone doing research uh, um, in this topic or uh, what are the research opportunities out there for this very focused uh, topic of uh, uh, psychological mental stress uh, and its effect on the immune system during COVID-19. So let me show you this website um, here if I can, there it goes. So that's clinicaltrials.gov. It's public website, it's, everything's free, no subscription. So um, it's very nicely maintained uh, by, um, I think the National Institute of Health, there it is, okay. And uh, it keeps track of all the studies, all the clinical trials that have happened or are happening. Um, you have to keep in mind, it doesn't take into account the smaller um, you know, research projects that happen within, the depart within a hospital, like a, a survey studies or um, studies that uh, are, um, are, are like uh, case reports or review papers. You don't get that kind of information, but only the clinical trials. Nevertheless, I think this is a great place to uh, figure out whom to contact uh, in terms of looking for research opportunities. Now, um, when I got the topic, I knew uh, it's a very new topic. So I kind of was expecting not to see a whole lot. And so, um, you know, here, this is, this is how it works. You basically type in a condition or a disease, other terms, um, and the country where, uh, where you want to look. Uh, you know, where you want to search. So let's, you know, let's just keep it very broad for now. Let's just write COVID-19. Let's see what, what we get. Now, so uh, what we see here is, so there are 657 studies found for COVID-19. And, um, you know, this kind of all over the world. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, uh, because there's so much information, you want to try and um, narrow it down. So um, this is how you can do it. Um, here it says, you know, who's recruiting, enrolling and everything. Um, I would suggest uh, just leaving, uh, like not checking anything here because, you know, the goal right now is to find uh, contacts, find uh, email addresses or contact info of researchers doing research in an area of interest that you have. So um, you look at, uh, you can look at eligibility criteria. I mean, there is, you know, of course, you can kind of um, uh, separate pediatric from adult uh, research studies. Um, and then let's see what's your study type. Um, I would just leave it, uh, you know, not check anything there. The study phase, funder type, and then study document. So that's all kind of not very, very useful. Um, but maybe in this situation, I'm just going to choose adult uh, just to kind of keep it that way and then apply and see what I get. So n there, there wasn't much change. So 644 studies. Now, what's going to be interesting is this map because then now you can focus your studies um, to US because that's where you want all the letters of uh, support from. So you do that, you go here, and then uh, it, narrow, it gives you every state that's doing research on COVID-19. Now, um, this applicant was in Massachusetts. So I'm gonna choose, or maybe I can just go down. Okay, there it chose Massachusetts. And so there are these 16 studies happening in, in uh, Massachusetts on COVID-19. Okay, um, a lot of them in Boston, 
um, and in multiple sites. Now, but that's not what this applicant was looking for. So what I would do is, let me try again. I'm gonna write um, stress COVID, see what I get. Okay, um, stress could mean a lot of things. Could be psychological, could be immune, um, stress to the immune system and everything. So let's see, okay, so we got 13 studies uh, between stress and COVID. And so let's look on a map. Oh, there are only two studies. So let's see where that's being done. Did I, okay, and okay, I'm just gonna choose all US studies. You know, for right now it doesn't matter to me. So for example, here, okay, look at this. So I found two studies um, on stress and COVID-19 being done in the US. There's one called mindfulness during COVID-19 and there's another one, acceptance and commitment therapy. Now, again, this is, this is not exactly what that uh, medical graduate was looking for, but I'm quite sure that if someone took the pains of, you know, uh, coming up with a trial and, um, you know, designing it, getting it IRB approved and everything, they must be doing other projects, review papers on the side. Okay, the good thing about this is there, you get some, uh, you get a contact information, um, phone, uh, email, and uh, where that's being done. So for example, if um, this applicant was interested in doing a study for this researcher, which kind of looks like this could be something like a, you know, uh, a telemedicine kind of a conversation and kind of rating anxiety, stress, and uh, session and mindful and the effect of mindfulness session, um, there's a good chance it can happen and that the study uh, can be done. So, um, and it's, it says like 200 um, participants. And so that's, that's one uh, lead now the other one is is going to be very similar, acceptance and commitment therapy. So I'm not sure about this. Uh, so you know, um, but again, so now here, for example, you know, it doesn't give a um, email address, but I'm pretty sure you can just Google this name and then find um, find their email address, and you know, they have some publications. Um, also here, you, you know, that, that might help you, uh, help you get that contact information. Um, other things you could type in, um, you know, just if you want to, I mean, yeah, we're going to have to keep trying and, you know, find out other, um, uh, other ways of doing this. So, you know, I'm just going to write, say, mindfulness and COVID. I think pretty much those two studies will come up again. Um, well, there are some more, but um, it's again based in the U.S. There's just that one based in the U.S. Um, let's let's kind of broaden it a little bit because I think uh, um, the applicant was asking about trying to write a review paper. So I'm going to write something like mental stress and infection, and see. Again, not a whole lot. Look at this pandemic stress vaccine, uh, psychological stress. And uh, then, it's, then it goes down to HIV infections and, and HIV really. Psychological burden in ICU survivors. But again, that's not what that applicant was looking. But you know, uh, it's pretty good. Um, let me look at this first one. This looks pretty interesting. So I think the study is done already. Mount Sinai Hospital, Canada. Okay, it's a close neighbor. And again, you know, you'll see some names here. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you look at the links, you'll find their contact information and see if, you know, um, uh, see if uh, they would be uh, interested in, or, they, you know, they have any opportunities out there. Um, and, but you're gonna have to like do a very good job writing a very personalized email explaining why, you know, you really like that um, to kind of participate in that kind of research. 
So uh, that's clinicaltrials.gov. Um, now, other things you can also search um, by specialty, say, you know, so for example, I'm going to just write nephrology. I'm sure there's going to be millions coming up. Oh, I'm sorry, not condition, but we will write other terms. Okay, 1,600 studies in nephrology. So if you want to, you know, start look if you if location is not a big thing for you um but if you want to like focus uh and in, in nephrology you know that's one for example you know i had an interest in studying um if i want to do research uh, in a in a hot topic in nephrology right now which is looking at potassium uh, binders in dialysis patients so there are these two new medications out there potassium binders. So I'm going to write, bind, uh, write binders. I'm just going to write hyperkalemia dialysis. Let's see what happens. Yeah, good. So then, you know, you get these five studies um, that have been done, all, you know, a couple of them in the U.S. And then, um, you know, so these uh, research teams are actively researching these medications, um, sodium zirconium, cyclosilicate, sodium polystyrene sulfonate uh, another one there but i'm pretty sure that you know they're, they're uh, that they would also be interested in uh writing review papers um uh if um let's go here for example um if, if they're kind of already writing it down or need more help um let me go down see if you can find some names um Okay, there's uh, Dr. Fishbane's name there. Uh, I'm very sure you can find him. He's, he's a very popular person in nephrology. So you can um, look for all research opportunities at a, um, by topic. If you just don't know um, how to go about it, you can just go search by state. You know? So for example, if, um, let's do Massachusetts. And like there are like eighteen thousand clinical studies happening in Massachusetts right now, and um, you know from from a variety of topics: GI, depression, pain, coronavirus, cancer. So, um, if location is more important to you, then you can kind of use this to kind of um, at least look at what research is being done um, locally, and then try to see if um, if uh, um, there is an area of interest that uh, that you're that you know um, that appeals to you and that, that you would be willing to work with that researcher on. Um, so you can search by location, you can search by a topic, um, you can search by specialty. Now, um, like I mentioned to you, it does not include um, IRB exempt studies, so smaller studies typically done by residents, fellows, students, uh, like surveys or observational studies will not show up here on clinicaltrials.gov. Um, but again, you know, the goal is to get the name of the lead researcher so that you can start writing to, writing to them. And um, it, it usually means that they are very active uh, in other research um, uh, studies. Um, and you know you can get the email addresses. Another cool thing is that you can also download. Um, so if you want to kind of you know um, uh, just download uh, for kind of uh, to kind of print it and then review it at a later time, you can kind of do that also. Um, now. Uh, and you know, if you're not able to find their email address, like I mentioned, look them up on Google search, look at their institute website, look look for them at LinkedIn, and then um, and then you know that's going to help you um, uh, help you find their email address. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is um, when you do look for these research opportunities, you're going to have to write to like you know don't expect like if you write to one or two people that they are going to respond there you know the researchers get so many requests that they're they're not going to spend their time replying to each and every uh request so you might have to like you know reach out to like i don't know 80 90 100 uh uh researchers to kind of before you get someone who's really looking for some help uh either uh, at that place or remotely so um don't be um don't be kind of uh, disappointed if you don't hear uh, if from just one if if you just send out an email to one or two people because that is kind of 
um, it, it, there's a very low chance of getting a response with very few emails. So it's just like how people, you know, look, uh, search for observerships. They kind of send out like hundreds of emails and then uh, someone will, you know, uh, uh, there's a good chance someone will respond. So the more emails you send out, the more researchers you reach out to, um, the better your chances of landing uh, a research opportunity. And the clinicaltrials.gov, again, you know, it's, it's an excellent website. It's free and you spend some time. I think the location feature is very, very helpful, especially if you don't, don't want to travel. And lastly, um, you know, so, uh, um, when you write an email to the researcher, you're going to have to make it very personalized. Don't, uh, uh, you know, it, it has to be, uh, it has to be like um, almost like writing a personal statement. You know, you really have to like explain to them why, uh, what kind of, uh, why are you interested in their research? What can you contribute and how, uh, how it's going to help you out um, as you apply for residency. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you, uh, everyone explored this website and feel free to send me any comments um, about what you thought was helpful at, at that website and do share with your friends and you know, so that everyone can benefit from uh, this information and do subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and my website edformedus.com, ed4medus.com. And you know, uh, follow me to kind of uh, get the latest uh, information and uh, similar uh, informational videos, so that you can improve your chances of getting into a residency program. All right, all the very best to you. Thank you.